Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. Now, where I live in the UK, we're currently going through a bit of a cost of living crisis. No thanks to our beautiful government, but some of you might be wondering, well, I don't need the best of the best performance, so do I really need to spend X amount on a CPU? And well, quite frankly, the answer to that is no. So today we're going to be taking a look at the i5-7400, which is a quad-core Kaby Lake based CPU, which is hopefully going to prove that. So the i5-7400 released in January 2017, and it cost at the time around 200 US dollars, which is around 245 US dollars today, about 200 British pounds in today's money. It was a quad-core CPU with no hyper-threading because this was back when Core i5s were still 4 cores with no hyper-threading, unlike what they are now. It also ran at a maximum speed of 3.5GHz. It was a 3GHz base clock, but 3.5GHz maximum boost on a single core, or 3.3GHz maximum boost in an all-core workload. Six years on, I obviously didn't pay £200 for it. I only paid £30 from CEX here in the UK. And when I actually went to get the screenshot, to show you how much I actually paid for it. The price has actually gone down now to only £25, which is about €30 US dollars at the time of writing. So it's a bloody good bargain, let's just say. Now the system we're going to be using for the benchmarks today is on the screen now, so you can pause the video if you'd like to get a better look. But for now, let's get straight into our first game. We're testing CSGO first today. I don't have access to the beta for the Source 2 update that's coming soon, but I'll be testing that when I do though. That aside, CSGO runs pretty much with no issues at all, at 1080p with the settings turned right up. I like testing a couple of the lighter maps, like Mirage and Overpass, and a harder to run map like Anubis. FPS dips to around the high 120s in Anubis at points, but otherwise that's as bad as it gets throughout the entire free map test. We do see the odd hitch here and there, which explains the 11.6 FPS 0.1% low but with an average frame rate of 205.6 FPS and a 1% low of 83.5, CSGO I'd say is running pretty well here. Rainbow Six Siege runs great as well, and actually runs better than even CSGO did. We're still using 1080p at max settings here too, minus AA, depth of field and lens effects, which I've turned off for my own personal preferences. For some reason, using Vulcan would crash the game with these settings, so I've stuck with DX11 for now. And like I said, the game runs great. I ran tests throughout, I think, three online team death matches, and with only a few brief hitches throughout, FPS was generally around 170 FPS, up to well over 200 FPS throughout. We're seeing the CPU pinned at 100% usage throughout, with our 3060 Ti staying roughly in the 50-70% to 70 range. So GPU-wise, I think even something like the 6GB version of the GTX 1060 or even lower would be a great choice here. Forza Horizon 5 is pretty well known for being really well optimised, and that definitely shows here. It's running here at 1080p on the high preset with pretty much no issues again. Barring a few minor hitches, there aren't any issues driving around in the open world, even in the small town areas where the FPS is usually a bit lower. It's the same story in online races too, but I did notice some network lag at one point, which I think could be the 7400 struggling to keep up with running the game and keeping track of where everything is in an online race as well. Nothing dropping the settings a bit won't fix though. Generally though, we're seeing around the low 90s up to around 110 FPS, so the 7400 is still doing really well, even in recent games. And we're finishing off with GTA 5. And I remember being shocked during the test at how good the game looks. I'm used to testing things that need the lowest settings, so to see the game at 1080p with them turned right up, I was amazed at the difference. But yeah, the game again runs really well. Not really much to say, to be honest. We never dropped below the mid-80s FPS throughout, and regularly touched nearly 100 FPS as well. We saw absolutely no issues throughout the entire test, so all in all, for the £30 I paid for the 7400, I'm pretty bloody impressed. So, in conclusion, if... You just don't really have much money to spend on the gaming PC right now, or if you have a 7400 and are desperately trying to hold on to it for as long as you possibly can, then there's no need to start worrying about the performance just yet. It can still keep up pretty well in even pretty recent games, 
Forza Horizon 5, for example, is the most recent game in the tests today, and that ran pretty much perfectly. You can even just drop the settings a little bit. If you want to try sort out that sort of little bit of network lag it had and the odd hitch in that. But even then it wasn't that bad anyway. I also had a look though at general usage. Um, so things like document writing, streaming 1080p YouTube or 1080p 60 YouTube, watching movies, just things like that that most people watching this would probably be using their computer for. There was absolutely no issues with that either. So all in all, the i5-7400 is a pretty decent shout if um, you want to build a gaming capable PC today but really don't have the money to spend on it. So yeah, that's going to be it for the video today. So if you enjoyed what you saw, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel, especially if you'd like to see more content like this. And I'll also link my Kofi page down there as well um, if you'd like to support me in creating these videos. But other than that, let me know down in the comments what you thought of the video or if you had or still have an i5-7400 yourself and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.